to be one of the most beautiful beaches in the world. And it's right here in Australia. Hi, I'm Katrina Hobbs and welcome to 3D Planet. I'm coming to you from Whitehaven Beach in the far northeastern state of Queensland in Australia. Now while you're watching the show, just remember to wear your 3D glasses whenever you see the symbol showing. The highest termite hills in the world, colourful parrots and unique animals. This is the famous outback of Australia. It's home to hardy animals and real Australian stockmen. But even more so, it's the land of the 50,000-year-old Aboriginal culture. Thick bushland on the coasts and endless expanses of desert, this is the picture which confronted the European settlers a little over two centuries ago. Just off the Australian coast, in the huge coral reefs, are some of the world's most spectacular diving haunts. Most of Queensland's towns are spread along the coast, and cities like Surfers Paradise really make the most of their beachside setting. This mixture of Las Vegas and Miami is the winter home for many who want to get away from the cold weather of Sydney. There are tropical temperatures in Queensland almost all year round. Only from June to August does the heat subside and then it gets a little windy. And that's good news for sailing fans. Australia is known as the land down under, a reference to its position in the southern hemisphere. Our journey takes us through Queensland, the northeasternmost of the country's six states and two territories. We start in Cloncurry, a small country town in the outback. Every year for five days in July, some of the country's best stockmen and women gather in Cloncurry to battle it out against each other. It's all about horsemanship, and it's a challenge for both horse and rider. It's serious stuff, and there's $75,000 in prize money to be won. Drafting is a major part of the event, and the skills used here are also part of everyday life for most of these competitors. It's a tough contest, but we have a winner. David Smith has beaten them all, and he can still hardly believe it. Well, it happens that quick, you, you really, yeah, don't know. You don't feel that much at all, you're just concentrating so much on the cow and what you, where you've got to do, and where you've got to be. Well, the feeling comes after you're finished, like now, yeah. It's a long five days, and the fun still goes on when the sun goes down. And what would a stockman's challenge be without a rodeo? The locals will be talking about this for months. Who fell when, how and why? Bruises are all part of the fun, but a real Aussie knows no pain. At sunup, we leave Cloncurry and head out for a beautiful oasis in the midst of the Australian outback.
This place is completely isolated. The broad, flat land stretches over an area the size of Germany. And don't forget, that's just the outback in Queensland. Fully loaded and equipped with extra cans of petrol, I cross the outback heading northwest. After endless kilometres of dry scrub, the vegetation suddenly changes. I'm approaching one of Australia's most beautiful national parks. Local guide Rod Lomo leads me through the tropical oasis of Lawn Hill National Park. Rod tells me that the park has many sacred Aboriginal sites and has been an important Aboriginal meeting point for thousands of years. It's the beautiful waters of Lawn Creek that bring this oasis to life. Rod says that freshwater crocodiles live here, but thankfully they're not so dangerous. We leave the outback now and travel nearly 2,000 kilometres to the southeast border of the state. We're heading for the bustling beaches of Surfers Paradise on the Gold Coast. And what a contrast! Surfers Paradise is the glitzy mecca for Australia's youth, who come from all over the country to enjoy their newfound freedom during the school holidays. Australians have learned to be careful about the sun because in Queensland, it doesn't take long to get burnt. Mermaid Beach is the place where the kite surfers congregate. Kite surfing has become the latest craze in Australia and the coast of Mermaid Beach is just perfect for this sport. Lots of wind and lots of space. Jenny's a world-class kite surfer. She's here training for the next championship and she spends every spare moment on the water. The start is the most difficult part of kite surfing. and I get the chance to get up in the air too, but not with a kite. So this is my hat? That's your hat, All just right. slide that on there. Oh, it's lovely. <laughs> right? Excellent, this is absolutely. Yep. an original Tiger Moth? It is an original 1931 design Tiger Moth, yeah. exactly as it was 70 years ago. Do you want to do that? I, can't I will. See. All right, Katrina, I'll just do up your buckles here. Alrighty. Leave this to me. Yes, not I'd rather. I, not that I don't trust you, but I don't <laughs> trust you. Oh, hang on, we're done? Yep. Well, this is going to be one hell of a way to see Surfers Paradise. All right, Jeff, let's go. Clear, contact. T minus 15 seconds, guidance is internal. I'm sitting in a piece of Australian history, 
Back in 1931, this plane flew the first loop-de-loops in front of amazed and admiring crowds. Over the last 25 years, Jeff has taken about 25,000 tourists clattering around the sky in this old timer. It's a great way to see the coast of surfers. Surfers Paradise and what a hell of an experience! That was incredible! <laughs> okay, I'm shaking, gently shaking, but If you want to get away from the crowds, then I've got the perfect spot up in the beautiful Whit Sunday Islands. This group of 74 islands lies in the middle of Queensland's coast. Directly on the beach of Long Island lies the Whitsunday Wilderness Lodge. Eight years ago, David McFarlane set up the secluded eco-resort and he brought along his orphaned kangaroo, Myrtle. She is free to hop around the island but it's clear that she feels a special bond with David. Now I've got to ask you, David, why would you come to a place that's so remote and start your, your business, your hotel here? Uh, mainly because I think the, as the world gets more and more developed, uh, these sort of places are becoming rarer and rarer to be able to get access to something like this. And is that why you made an eco-lodge as opposed to... Yeah, like... yeah, I think uh, the more we become sophisticated and civilised, the more we need to get back into nature and enjoy this sort of experience. I can see why. David caters for travellers who want to get away from the stress of the busier resorts and tourist crowds. This is definitely the right place, as the huts are surrounded by the beautiful rainforests of the Whitsundays National Park. of Queensland is dotted with resorts that will satisfy all tastes and budgets. One of the biggest attractions in Queensland must be the Great Barrier Reef. Because it's a fair way offshore, it's best reached by either boat or helicopter. The Great Barrier Reef is the Earth's largest coral reef. It stretches over 2,000 kilometres down the coast. It's an underwater paradise for both fish and divers alike. This heart reef is a natural formation of the coral.
The reefs were formed over millions of years, and even today, they are still constantly growing and changing. Well, they tell me it's even more beautiful under the water, so let's see. When coral polyps die, their hard coral skeletons remain, allowing new polyps to build onto the dead coral base. This is how, over the ages, this richly coloured underwater world has managed to form. From diving pontoons and excursion boats, Visitors can snorkel or dive around this magnificent coral world. Home to over 1,500 fish species and about 400 varieties of coral. But this underwater world is endangered. Since the climate has become warmer and tourists have arrived in their millions, some parts of the Great Barrier Reef habitat have been destroyed. Coral is made of living beings which can die. For this reason alone, you should be extremely careful when diving and not touch the coral. On land too, there's also lots of fascinating wildlife. At Rainforest Station in Karanda, I meet Evan okay. Jap. This is definitely a new thing for me. You ready okay. to hold it? Or? Ooh, hi, how you doing? Okay, this is me. Then he you, really woo. puts the snake okay. around my shoulders. What do you think for me to do? <sighs> I'm shaking so much. Too. Okay. What? <gasps> oh my God, he feels amazing. Oh my goodness. Don't squeeze him, just use a free hand and support free his hand. weight. Yeah. Okay, now time, time, come back here, don't leave me. Talk to me about it. What, what sort of snake is this? It's, oh my it's gosh. called a carpet python. Yeah. Okay. And where uh, does he live? Uh, they're found in the rainforest around this region. Uh, Hurt you, you don't swallow me. Hopefully you won't 60 notice 60 to them. 80 teeth, which are needle like. Okay, good. Could you pull them away? <laughs> the reason they have a forked tongue is because they taste each direction of the air. Meanwhile, an enormous saltwater crocodile is watching us. His five metre length is pretty impressive. So this is a saltwater crocodile. He's a male? He is a male, yes. And what's his name? Jack the Ripper. Why is he called Jack the Ripper? Well, um, he's named after the famous English lady killer and he's killed about 12 of his female girlfriends. And why is that? Is, is he very territorial? Or? Uh, very territorial. Um, crocodiles, especially large males, will defend a stretch of water and whatnot for some several kilometres. So and they're quite uh, domineering, these guys. As hot as it is, you can't persuade me to go swimming in this stream. Now, I much prefer these fairy little bundles. What kind of visit to Australia would it be without seeing a real koala? They are so incredibly soft. So this is your classic koala, but not a koala bear? Yeah, that's correct. Um, koalas are marsupials, they give birth to undeveloped young. And uh, bears are mammals, and they give birth to live developed young. So that's a common misconception, because people often think of them as koala bears, because they look like little bears. That's correct, yeah, <laughs> they look like little teddy bears. They're so soft, they're so soft. Oh, they're so cuddly, I just have to take them in my arms. Okay, here you are. Oh my gosh. Oh my Probably she's got really sharp claws. You have got really sharp claws. 
goodness. If I just stay really still, you'll think I'm a tree, maybe. The area around Karanda offers a lot more than a face-to-face -face encounter with one of Australia's best-known animals. Even city dwellers can catch some of the enchantment of the rainforest by walking along these robust wooden pathways. Another option is to take a guided safari through the 40 hectares of jungle at Rainforest Station. These army ducks are a good vantage point to see countless species of birds, animals and plants. These amphibious vehicles are ideally suited for exploring the area. Unlike the outback of Queensland, this region is humid and gets frequent rainfall. Surrounding Karanda is a huge expanse of World Heritage National Park. In prehistoric times, this is what much of Australia looked like. Rainforest Station also offers the opportunity to experience some traditional Aboriginal culture with the Pamagiri people. Until 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock angle tilting, and yep. you throw, flick it, make it spin as fast as you can. Yep. It's like throwing a ball. Step, snap, power! <laughs> power! Okay. <laughs> oh! Good oh! Good angle, coming around, coming back. That's a good Come throw. back to me! Coming back. Come back. It didn't hit the tree. First time, it didn't hit the tree. Well, that's all we've got time for on this show. I hope you've enjoyed the great diversity of Queensland, Australia. See you next time somewhere on this wonderful planet of ours.